Hey everyone, Cinema Buffs here, bringing you our review of Passengers. So, Passengers is this new original sci-fi thriller starring Jennifer Lawrence and Chris Pratt. It's essentially about this ship that's going through light speed for about 130 years, and two of the passengers wake up 90 years early in their journey. So, let's just start with your initial thoughts of the main characters. I mean, this is mostly based on, I mean, it just has Chris Pratt and Jennifer Lawrence for the most part. So, what'd you think? Yeah, uh, this movie is kind of like a uh, like a desert island movie, but takes place in space. Instead of these two people, people being stranded on a desert island, they're stranded on this ship in space. Yep. And uh, between the two leads, I like both Chris Pratt and Jennifer Lawrence in yeah. general. And I really like Chris Pratt in this movie, but I gotta say, this is kind of one of those movies where I feel like Jennifer Lawrence phoned it in a little bit. Yeah? I think that there are the, there's these big spectacle movies, and she's been doing a lot of them lately between Hunger Games and X-Men. Mm -hmm. And I think that when she does like these smaller movies, more focused movies, like the one she do, does with uh, David O. Russell, yeah. like, I think that's where she really gives it all her all. And with these ones, she's kind of like... Shows sleepwalks up. through it a little bit. I didn't. I don't want to say it's a bad performance by her, but it's just it, it's not the quality that I'm used to receiving from her. So it's not a bad performance in general, but I think it's a bad performance for her. Okay. But I thought Chris Pratt was you know he was Chris Pratt. He was you know funny guy, kind of dopey, yeah. you know kind of schmuck type dude. But I think that although I didn't like uh, Jennifer Lawrence's performance, I thought that. There was some chemistry between the two of them. Not a lot, but some. What did you feel about the two leads? Uh, I thought that... I, I can see where you're coming from with the Jennifer Lawrence. Uh, I think that she sort of went through this effortlessly. You know, like you said. Like, that might be a better read word. this line. Like, and once again, not bad, but no. definitely not a standout. People aren't going to be like, oh, Jennifer Lawrence and Passengers. Like, no. not a chance. And Chris Pratt, I do enjoy Chris Pratt. I think he has a lot of charisma, and he's just, you know, he has an on-screen presence in general. And in this, it's a lot of Chris Pratt-isms here and yep. there. Um, but he does a good job. Both performances lead the movie. It was never like, oh, I'm sick of these people or anything like that. It no. was serviceable. Yeah, yeah, and it, it was services, But nothing stand out. No, no. And um, there are other actors, uh, prominently the most featured other actor is uh, Michael Sheen as the robot bartender yeah. who was looked a lot like Lloyd in The Shining. Did you get that? A too? little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just with like yeah. the red, you know, blazer and yeah. bow tie and everything. Mm -hmm. I kind of got a lot it. of that vibe from it. Um, but yeah, outside of that, there aren't really too many other, too many other characters. And the other actors who do show up, uh, Lawrence Fishburne comes in the movie later. Brief. Yes. And I think that he's effective for what he did. If there is a standout Performance. performance. I would say it's from the bartender. Uh, I liked his character. I like that he was very self-aware. I like that Chris Pratt needed advice. He needs human advice. And this bartender's like, this sounds like questions for a human, not a robot. Like, he doesn't have emotions to support any of this. Mm -hmm. So he's really there for moral support. He's a positive entity in the whole thing and sort of gives him a little less feeling of loneliness in the whole thing. So I liked his performance. I like the bartender a lot. Yeah, yeah. I think Michael Sheen was easily the best. We'll, we'll get, we're going to get into spoilers a little bit here. Yeah, uh, we kind of have to. Yeah, there's stuff that unfolds within the first act of this movie that isn't shown in the tra in the trailers at all, and so we have to talk about it because it impacts the movie. Definitely. Now, from the trailers, you get the feeling like these two people were woken up like just by chance and everything, and they're together. it's like they're, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like they're star-crossed lovers, like all these thousands of people on the ship, they're the only two who are accidentally woken up. Like It's meant to be. Yeah. But then you find out... Chris Pratt was the one accidentally woken up, and he intentionally woke Wakes. up Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah. And that just really put a sour taste in my mouth for the whole plot from I, that point on. I can't agree with you more on that one, man. It really bummed me out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it sort of... Cause, like, the trailers were mis misleading, it, unfortunately for me. I was like, wow. But also, it answered this question where I'm like, wow, just randomly out of 5,000 people, two beautiful people <laughs> are like, oh... Weird. So, like, I like the fact that he sort of falls for her a little bit without ever meeting her. But at the same time, it completely taints his character that he would ever do such a horrible thing. That is, like, she's right. It's murder. Yeah, she she finds out that, because she thinks, just like Chris Pratt, it was an accident. She just happened to be awoken. Yeah. And then it's a re finally revealed to her that Chris Pratt did wake her up. <clears throat> and she's pissed. And she does say, it's murder. He took my life from me. And I'm like, it's totally murder. It is. Like, there's no way that anyone would ever be able to live with themselves for this secret. Or for someone to ever forgive anyone for doing this to them. I think that it really 
made me dislike Chris Pratt's character. I get it. Like, they try to convey loneliness as much as they can, and he is lonely. And there is thoughts of suicide, and there mm -hmm. is all these, like, things where he's just like, I can't do this alone, but, geez, to drag someone down with you was just an... I think that was an awful choice on the story part. When the love story, when they're doing this montage of them getting along and doing these activities and finding fun and finding a life with themselves, still in the audience, is, in the back of their mind, they're like, this is all a lie. And it really... Movies are supposed to make you feel things, and it did make me feel something. Yes. It did, but not something I wanted to. It it had the opportunity to make you feel something different, and it ruined it. I know we spoiled a lot. I don't want to keep on spoiling more, so I'll just say that between the two leads, one of them has a choice at the very end, and the choice that they made pissed me off <laughs> even more. Oh, Infuriated like... me even more. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, this is going to happen at the end and this person's going to make this choice and this person's going to deal with this. Yeah. But no, it's just, it went, it, it's, it's sappy. Yeah. It's sappy, this ending. Just like, oh gosh, doesn't it make you feel good? Like, no, it doesn't. It doesn't make you feel good. Do you think it was at least well made? Um, well, the director of this is uh, Morton Tildum. He directed... Uh, the Imitation Game, which he mm -hmm. got an Oscar nomination for a couple yeah. years ago. Great movie. And I saw a movie of his before that. Uh, I think it's a Dutch movie called Headhunters. Okay. Yeah, that, that was a great movie, too. So with those two movies going in this, I was really excited. Because I'm like, more than tell them, maybe he's a new director to watch. But I feel like this was just like kind of like by the numbers execution. Um, kind of like the acting. Yeah, exactly. And I just think that, you know, every nobody... like. There weren't, I don't think anybody like was lazy and fell asleep on the job during this movie. But I don't feel like anybody had really had that drive, that passion to make a great movie. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I just, there was a lot of things that didn't fit together. The problem was that, that they had an opportunity to make a really good original sci-fi thriller. And they even had opportunity for great writing and dialogue. I found the dialogue to be pretty clunky here and there where they're alone. They could have these moments, these epiphanies, almost like, not quite like before sunrise or anything like those movies right, where it's all right. dialogue oriented, but they could have some really poignant conversation that never really takes place. It's all pretty surface level. Um, and another thing that kind of bothered me about it was the music. The music wasn't standout-ish and uh, the soundtrack was kind of, at times, not fitting. Uh, there is a point where he has to make a decision when he's alone before he wakes her up where he has a lever, you know? And I'm like, this could be an emotional, gripping, heart-wrenching, like, I'm gonna end it all moment, but instead they added the suspense music that was like, dun 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 and then he, like, doesn't do it. Right. And I'm like, this could have been something that could have really brought the audience closer to this character. Instead, they tried to do a suspense thing that didn't fit. So I felt like, all in all, it is a good-looking movie, yes. but it just, like you said, there's, there's no heart, there's no passion in it. Yeah, the atmosphere is there. I mean, the spaceship, the production design, everything, <clears throat> almost everything technical, I agree about the music. Almost everything technical about this movie is good. Mm -hmm. But I just feel like it wasn't done without passion. It's just that nobody really had the drive to make a good movie, and everybody was there for a paycheck. Yeah, and it sort of just left it kind of feeling lifeless. Buh. All right, so there's the review. There's our thoughts. Dennis, let's put a number on it. Uh, yeah, I, I remember uh, a while ago, Nate and I were talking about the movies coming out towards the end of the year, and Nate was like, Rogue One, that's the only one I'm looking forward to. I was like, I, yes, of course, Rogue One, but I was also really looking forward to this, you know? Two stars that I liked, a director that, you know, I thought was up and coming, and I was excited for something original, but there was a lot of cliches, a lot of tropes, and the things that they went against cliche and against the grain just rubbed me the wrong way. I didn't have fun watching this movie. I don't recommend going to see it. I'm going to go 4 out of 10. Wow. Pretty low. I think that might be your lowest this year. Yeah. 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 Well, no, Jack Reacher. <laughs> oh, yeah, Jack Reacher. How could we forget? Um, We've been trying to. I mean, I think that that is, um, you know, a deserved score. I, I'm going to go a little bit higher. I This movie, I was... I, I didn't dislike my experience watching it, you know? And I think that this will be very serviceable to a lot of people that want to see a mindless sci-fi movie. This might be a movie that people that don't like sci-fi might actually like this. If they want a simple, good-looking love story, kind of. But all in all, I didn't dislike my experience, but I won't ever watch it again. Um, so I'm going to go 5.5. Okay. So I, I probably still won't recommend it to at least my good friends. No, no. <laughs> Honestly, if you're going to go to a movie this weekend, go see Star Wars. Yeah. If you've seen just it, go, go see, see it again. Yeah, just see it again. It's going to be worth your money over this one. Yeah.
Buff. All right, so that's our review of Passengers. Did you see the movie? What did you think? Don't forget to leave all your comments below. And of course, please like, share, subscribe. We always appreciate all the support. Yeah, and be sure to join us on Christmas Day as Nate will be joining me for the last of my holiday movie reviews as we talk about It's a Wonderful Life, the Frank Capra classic. Mm -hmm. And join us next week, because uh, this is actually our last review of the year. So we're going to have a big 2016 wrap-up show. We're going to be talking about our favorite movies from this past year our least favorite movies, and what we're looking forward to in 2017. Nice. So join us next week, but don't forget, there's no place like the theater. Hey everyone, Nate from Cinema Buffs. You know, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. So click that subscribe button and become a Cinema Buff, and you can catch all of our videos as they're released. So thanks again for watching, and remember, there's no place like the theater.